right now I don't have any lights with me. I kind of forgot them at my parents' place <laughs> while I was moving. So there was that. So I kind of had to improvise a bit. So the first thing I did, I tried the light in my room. And it kind of sucked. A lot. After trying and trying, I finally came to the realization there's this obvious light we all know, we always look out of it. The natural light, aka the window. Yeah, I will show you in this video how you can light without any light at all. And how we can improvise a little bit with blankets and stuff like that. Wow, right? <laughs> I don't know. And yeah, turn off uh, the light in your room, definitely. First up, we need to know how we should light. Yeah, this is always a thing, like what always helps, I already told that in another video, always film at the shadow side of your subject, or like yourself, if you film yourself, of course, because it just gives you more depth and depth means more cinematic and your subject, in that case maybe you, is popping out much more, which we want. So one term for that would be the Rembrandt lighting. That means it's kind of like a cinematic triangle in a way. So there's like your camera, right or like left, depends which perspective you are right now. There's like your light source and like for me it is like the window right now there. For example, right now there should be like something like a reflector what diffuses the light. So. I don't have that right now, <laughs> so it's a kind of a triangle. <laughs> Rembrandt light, it was already a thing back in the past for portrait or cinematography. And you see, shadow was already a thing when there were portraits or like there was not even movies or films. So first up, we are talking about shooting indoors. Like I already told you what is our light source. It's the window we have right there. There's this light coming in and I get like this, this shadow side here and it just just looks better if it's like completely bright like this. Okay, you don't see me right now, but you get the idea, right? <laughs> Position your camera in a sweet angle, like for example, like this, I guess, when you like want to talk with the camera. Maybe you go for a detail shot, it depends what you want to do. I always take care that it's not too bright, so I sometimes use an ND filter or like use like an aperture. Yeah, which is not the lowest, maybe I go F3 or 4, depends what I want sometimes. And what I do, what I'm actually doing right now, I can actually show you. This is... Uh, I use curtains. <laughs> and yeah, this works like surprisingly good sometimes. And yeah, it diffuses the light and the shadows are not too harsh then which is like what we want, we want like smooth shadows. Sometimes if I don't have any curtains with me, I don't know. <laughs> I use towels, for example, to create more shadow. You can also use a black towel or like a black blanket. You play around with your lights, which, which we want. And like you can go crazy with that. Like a lot of work is just if you position stuff right. And yeah, how you position it, it's completely depends sometimes you need someone to hold it maybe you want like to put it on the tripod that's on you like everything is possible but this is also a way to create like cool light indoors with just your window i tried this and it was surprisingly well and i felt like okay that's crazy this works i don't need any aperture 300d or 600d overrated guys <laughs> I also love to play around with natural light, so um, you saw those shots like a lot in my videos already. So I love to only see the outlines of a person sometimes, so I just film just when the window is just like in front of me and I'm like there. I hope you get this, how I just told you that. <laughs> I love to do the shots, it's like a creative dramatic shot of course, but it adds to your storytelling. Uh, if you use it wisely. Uh, filming outdoors. I love to shoot outdoors when there's like specific times, especially when it's like sunset or sunrise or maybe when it's cloudy, because usually uh, the sun doesn't work out that well. So there's that, because the sun is creating so many harsh shadows. So it's sometimes hard to get like a cinematic photo. And also you picture or like your shot so easily overexposed so you have to use an ND filter or maybe yeah 
change the aperture to like f8, 9, 10. But yeah, the picture doesn't look too good then. Ah, yeah, there's like no blurriness. It doesn't feel natural. It's not cinematic and your subject doesn't pop out if you have a subject. When I shoot it when it's sunny, I try to shoot in the shadow. And yeah, especially what helps a lot. I shoot a lot when it's sunrise, sunset. It looks super incredible nice. The light is kind of diffused in a way and it just feels right to film at that time. It's it's sometimes hard to get up like at 7, 6, 4, 5 a.m. It depends which time zone you are, I have no idea. I used to wake up at like 4, 5 a.m. to get sometimes a shot when there's like a very, very beautiful sunrise. But yeah, you do you, but it, it's always worth it. I just recommend it to do it at least once to do it it's like so crazy nice light and it's 30 in the morning it feels like so much calming when you go to places and film it's not crowded and it's relaxing okay i just went into a deep dive for that yeah but when i do shoot i try to use it to my advantage as well and yeah try to create a little bit of contrast with the blue sky so my person or subject is popping out more and you see it just kind of repeats itself kind of it's just always like popping out like a little bit of blurriness not too overexposed and you're good to go and your picture is set okay so i just told you how awesome the natural light is and stuff like that but sometimes yeah you know it's the situations are like different so everything is complicated so practical lights is a way to make your picture even better so what i like to do is uh, using laptop or something to get like a little bit of an, like a different source to also create some sort of realism you can also use like tvs uh, candles street lights neon signs you name it there are like tons of things there are a lot of practical lights in the city especially and I kind of miss those layers and lights, neon lights in Korea, Japan, like in the cities, Seoul, Tokyo. And they just look very, very cool. I miss them, I miss them a lot, actually. So yeah, uh, just take care to create more depth and it, there's like, they just look cinematic and uh, great overall. So this is my take about like film with natural light and a little bit of it with practical light. I feel like when you want to create light, you first need to see light. This is a very important fact. Shooting from the shadow side, getting like a little bit more diffusion here and there. And yeah, you can practice that so good with like your essentials at home. And I feel like it's like a very cool thing. Opportunity and light is just like everything. It's so crazy. So yeah, that's my take about that. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to say thank you for 2000 subscribers. And I'm like, oh damn, it's like, oh, oh, oh. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that very much. That's like, I didn't expect that at all, to be honest. <laughs> right now it's Christmas and uh, I'm filming this light a few days before, obviously. And yeah. Anyway, I hope you have like a nice Christmas and a good new year. And we will see us again, definitely. Yeah. Goodbye.